everyone, welcome to EasyMed. In this video, we'll be learning about some basic features in our gastrointestinal system and the process of smooth muscle contraction. Almost every organ of our GI system has basically four layers, namely outer serosa, muscularis externa with outer longitudinal and inner circular muscle, submucosa, and innermost mucosa with three layers, that is muscularis mucosae, lamina propria, and epithelial lining. An exception to this is oblique muscle present inner to the circular muscle found only in stomach. Apart from this, what is unique about our GI system is the presence of third part of autonomic nervous system, that is enteric nervous system. It contains about a million neurons as much as in the spinal cord. Hence, it is known as the second brain or the brain of the gut. The enteric nervous system is influenced by sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, but it can work independently as well. The enteric nervous system, ENS, consists of myenteric plexus lying between the two layers of muscularis externa. It is also known as orbach plexus. Remember it as myo, meaning muscles, so lying between the two muscle layers. Meissner's plexus or submucosal plexus is another one which lies, as the name suggests, in the submucosal layer. The spinenteric plexus lying between the muscle is responsible for gut motility, whereas Meissner's plexus lying in the submucosal layer is responsible for secretion, absorption, and local mucosal folds. Now that we are clear about this, we can move to electrical activity. The electrical activity in GI system is a slow, continuous, intrinsic activity in the smooth muscle membrane. The first initiation is through the interstitial cells of Cajal. They are the electrical pacemaker cells of our gastrointestinal system, like the SA node in the heart. Now, let's dive into the action potential generated in the smooth muscle for its contraction. First, what we must know is the smooth muscle fibers are arranged in bundles. Each bundle contain about a thousand fibers. These muscle fibers are connected with each other through gap junctions. There are many many such bundles and even those bundles are connected by gap junctions. This suggests that there is a branching lattice of smooth muscle bundle in each layer. Hence, it works as a syncytium. So, what happens is, an action potential elicited anywhere within the muscle mass travels in all directions in the muscle. The distance travel depends on excitability of the muscle, and this type of smooth muscle is known as unitary smooth muscle. When any neural or hormonal signal is received by the uh, pacemaker cells, some unique ion channels open in them periodically, and this produces an inward current. Hence, it generates a slow wave activity. The depolarization is caused due to calcium influx, while repolarization is due to potassium efflux. The slow wave produce rhythmic contractions, hence known as the basal electric rhythm. But remember, these are not true action potential and they do not cause contraction directly. Slow waves in stomach are about 3 per minute, 12 per minute in duodenum and 8 to 9 per minute in ileum. The resting membrane potential of our stomach is about minus 50 to minus 60 millivolt. Slow wave cause depolarization to occur and this may or may not reach threshold potential of minus 40 millivolt. But if it does, then things become really interesting. Once threshold is reached, voltage gated calcium sodium channels open and cause inflow of large amount of calcium ions and this produces something called spike potential. This spike potential is the true action potential and this brings contraction. The number of spike potential produced depends upon how long the slow wave remain above threshold and the frequency as well. You must have noticed it's the influx of calcium that causes the action potential and not the sodium ions as in the large nerve fibers. The calcium sodium channel being slow to open and close causes influx of large amount of calcium that not only depolarizes but also helps in contraction. 
There can eventually be two types of contraction. First is phasic contraction, which is a contraction followed by relaxation. Next is tonic contraction, which is a persistent contraction like the ones we find in the sphincter. The tonic contraction is caused by repetitive spike potential, hormones or other factors causing continuous partial depolarization or continuous calcium injury. In this way, contraction is initiated and manifested in our GI smooth muscles. Some factors that cause depolarization include stretching, acetylcholine from parasympathetic nervous system, and stimulus by different specific GI hormones. And some factors which causes hyperpolarization include epinephrine, non-epinephrine, and stimulus from sympathetic fibers. So overall, some points of attention include first, enteric nervous system can work independently and it consists of myenteric and mesonous plexus. Second, myenteric control gut motility and mesonous control GI secretion and absorption. Third is pacemaker cells initiate depolarization in interstitial cells of Kahal. Fourth is the calcium entry causes action potential to develop, not the sodium entry. And finally, the phasic and the tonic type of contractions. Thank you so much guys for staying with us till the end. If you were of any help, please support us and like comment and share this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you again.